Hello everyone, it's Jen. I'm super excited to be guest designing for my friends at the Rabbit Hole Design, so I'll be sharing a number of projects over the next little bit. Today's card is using the All Ears, which is part of this week's release. I also have the Caffeinated Dragon with the coordinating die. Now this is upside down right now, but I just wanted to point out that it cuts out a lot of the details of the stamp. This is the sassy birthday. There's tons of fun sentiments like, at least you're not as old as you will be next year. Welcome to the 29 years old forever club. And then I also have the celebrate with cake stamp set. So we're gonna get started here with the all ears. And I like to condition my stamps using a white eraser. So I'm just gonna rub that over top of the stamp. You just wanna make sure that none of the little shavings get caught onto the stamp but I find this is my preferred way for conditioning a stamp that I've never used before. So I'm gonna stamp this up with my Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I will be Copic coloring today. So I'm gonna stamp this out a couple times and then I'm gonna grab some Gina K masking paper and I'll stamp this image onto that as well. Once I get that stamped out, I can go ahead and fussy cut out the image on the masking paper. And when I do that, I make sure that I'm on the black line of the image. So now that I have those done, we can go ahead and start coloring. So this card is inspired by the Little Peeps Easter candies. Now, I'm not really a Peeps connoisseur, and I'm pretty sure they are chicks. I think I've seen Little Peeps with bunnies, but I'm not 100% sure but it's the color that really inspired this card. So for my first color, I'm going to be using this three color pink combination. So my darkest marker is the RV19, my midtone is the R83, and then my lightest is the RV11. I'm not really paying attention too much to light source. I don't normally uh, pay much attention to that. I kind of really like to focus on the contrast and the uh, shading or shadows. So I'm just looking at this image and when I lay down my darkest marker, I wanna make sure that I'm adding that to any of the areas where there's a body part of another bunny in front of the bunny. So you can see for the one to the bottom uh, left there where that little hand was in front, I made sure to add some shadows behind that. And then also, for the little bunny that I'm coloring now, I wanna make sure that there's some dark contrast behind the ears of the two bunnies in front of him. And how cute is that little bunny with the glasses? The faces on these little bunnies are just so cute. I'm going to also add some of this pink color combination to the little bow on this particular bunny, and then I'm gonna move on to my yellow combination. So for this, my darkest marker is the Y35, my midtone is the Y15, and then my lightest marker is the Y11. Like I said, I really wanted these bunnies to be a bright color. It's my first Easter card of the season, and I just wanted to celebrate all those beautiful bright colors that remind me of Easter. So I colored up that little bunny to the bottom left there, and then I'm working on the little girl with the bow in her hair. So she's gonna have a lot of shading uh, down to the bottom of her face where the other bunny's ears are over top of her face there. I'm also going to color this little guy here to the top left as well with the little winking face. He kind of looks like he's up to trouble in that little bunch of bunnies. So I wanted to color him in the yellow as well and you can see there he's sort of standing so I colored his body down close to where the pink bunny was. For my purple color combination I'm using one of my favorite three color combinations here for purples which is V17 as the darkest, V15 as the midtone, and V12 as the lightest. Now the V17 is quite dark so I'm trying to just lightly touch the tip of my marker and again, just adding the shadows behind the bunny ears and then under his neck where his head would have a shadow. And then again, that little pink bunny would cast a shadow behind his or her head onto the body as well. I'm gonna add another purple bunny here to the bottom right. 
and again look at the cute little face I love that they're all different faces and I just want to squish them they're so cute so the only trouble I had here with the colors and actually I'm not going to do that until the end I thought that was with the purple bunny but it's actually going to be the last bunny I colored so I'll come back and talk about that in a little bit um, but for this I'm using an aqua or teal color combination and the darkest marker that I'm using is the BG49 and then my midtone is the BG13 and my lightest the BG11. So I'm going to color that bunny up in the middle and then this one to the bottom left where he's got his head kind of tilting upwards. So he'll have a shadow to the back left hand side of his body and then underneath his head over top of his paws there will have a little bit of a shadow as well. And I did kind of go outside the lines there, so I'm just going to use my colorless blender to fix that up. To balance out this turquoise color, I'm also going to color this bunny to the right hand side here. And I'm going to have a center highlight on him, so just having the darkest again around the ears of the other little bunny in front of him. I'm bringing in some orange as well, and my darkest color is the YR18. My midtone is the YR18. YR04 and then my lightest is the YR21. So I'm going to color a couple of these little guys up here. I wasn't quite sure what color I was going to do this one at the bottom. I wanted to see how everything was balancing out so I left that one to the end and I decided to bring back the pink color combination. Now here see that little part on top of the bunny's head. I wasn't quite sure who that body part belonged to. So that was the only part of the stamp set that I wasn't really sure of, but I'm kind of figuring if I'm not sure, nobody else is gonna be sure, so it's not a big deal. So don't worry too much about your coloring if you're not sure about things, because guaranteed, if you're not sure, someone else isn't sure either. So for the ears, I wanted to use uh, just the C1, and then I'll blend that out with the Colorless Blender. I wanted to give them really bright cheeks here. I wanted the cheeks to stand out on the bright colors of the bunny, so I'm using the RV25 for that. And that way, you can see it on all of the colors, including the darker purple color. And once I get that done, I decided to add little freckles to all the bunnies over top of the pink little cheeks. And this just kind of mutes back that bright pink a little bit and adds a little bit of fun detail to our bunnies. I'm going to also add some black glaze pen to the pupils of the rabbits who have their eyes open. I went back and colored their little noses in with the black glaze pen as well. So here I have my mask cut out. So I'm going to place that over top of my image and you're going to see when I start laying this down, one of the ears is going to give me a bit of trouble. It wasn't sticking and so I decided to pull it up when, yeah, I figured it out there that it wasn't sticking and I actually didn't get a piece of the release paper off. So if you ever have trouble with your masks not sticking, there might just be a piece there that didn't come off when you peeled back the release paper. I'm gonna do a really easy background here. I'm choosing my Distress Oxide in Shaded Lilac. I love this color and it's such a pretty Easter color as well. And I thought this would really um, highlight the bright colors of the bunnies. So I'm just going to do a halo effect around our cute little bunnies here and have a lot of white space on this card as well. Again, just to balance out the brightness of the card. So once I clean up my mat here, I can go ahead and peel up the mat, the mask. And you just want to be careful when you're taking that off because the Distress Oxide ink does take a little while to dry. So you just want to peel that up ever so gently. I'm just using a paintbrush here to add some of the ink around the image where my mask wasn't cut perfectly on the black line. This is such an easy fix and it really finishes off your masking nicely if there's any imperfections. So I'm just dipping the paintbrush right into the ink 
and I can go ahead and spread that out. I'm just going to fix up that bottom right hand corner. And then I'm going to add some gray shadows here to the bottom of our little bunny pile. I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do for that area of the stamp and I thought I would just go with something neutral uh, so it didn't get in the way of the brightness of our little bunnies. I wanted them to really stick out on the card. So I did just go ahead and blend that out with my colorless blender and then I grabbed a piece of this pattern paper from Doodlebug. This is from last year's e Easter collection called Hoppy Easter. And there's this adorable little piece of paper with Easter eggs on it. And it just happened to perfectly match my bunnies, which was not planned, but turned out to be perfect. So I cut that out with my Tim Holtz trimmer there to uh, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then I'm just adding some double-sided tape here. And I placed my card panel on top of the roll of tape just because I did have some of that tape to the back and I didn't want it to stick to my glass mat. So that's just a simple tip if you don't want anything to stick down to your surface that you're working on. And then I can go ahead and add this panel to the pattern paper. Before I go any further, I thought it was time to stamp my sentiment and I couldn't resist using two of the sentiment. So I'm using Hoppy Easter up to the top left there. And then underneath the bunnies, I'm going to stamp out There's No Bunny Like You. Love the sentiments. So I will have all the products that I'm using today listed below. I'll link to the rabbit hole designs and you can also pick up these products at the Not Too Shabby Shop, and I'll leave those links below as well as a coupon code that you can use if you choose to shop there. So once I have my sentiments down here, I can go ahead and add my card panel to my card base. And then I'm going to add some details here as well as finish up the bottom of the card where the ribbon is. I'm actually going to put a button on my card. I have no idea the last time that I put a button on a card, but I just thought it went perfect with Easter. I don't know. There's something about cute little things at Easter. And so I decided to put this on top of the ribbon. And this is just some ribbon from my stash. I did glue that down with some glue dots and just glued the bow on top of my button there. To finish off, I'm using some Nouveau Glaze on the eyeglasses of the bunny and the bow. And that finishes the card for today. So I hope you enjoyed. There's lots of inspiration from the design team today using the all ears. So go ahead and check them out. And I will see you soon with another project. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.